Welcome back to Doc Talk on Eastlink Television. I'm Dr. John Gillis here today talking about acupuncture. Old becomes new. My guest today is Jillian Massolier. Welcome, Jillian. Thank you, John. Jillian has a master's degree in traditional Chinese medicine mm -hmm. and is the program director of the acupuncture program at Compu College here in HRM. And is here to share all the things she knows about Chinese traditional medicine, acupuncture, iridology, and perhaps to do a little bit of work on my broken leg here. <laughs> tells me she's going to fix me up and make me feel better. <laughs> so, uh, Jillian, maybe you could tell us a bit about you, your, uh, your background, and then we'll get into uh, all the interesting things that you do. Sure. Um, I started doing nursing in Calgary uh, when I was 17, and it just wasn't quite for me. Uh, I was actually going to go into medicine, but it didn't jive exactly with the way I thought. So I traveled for a while, and I met someone doing acupuncture, and that just was just how the way I thought. So I went to Victoria, B.C., and I did a four-year master's program of traditional Chinese medicine, which is acupuncture and Chinese herbs. Then I moved to St. John's, Newfoundland, and I mentored for a while under a lady there. And I uh, taught the program, uh, the Compu College program for acupuncture in St. John's for just over three years. Um, I'm a certified iridologist. I went and did my cosmetic acupuncture also, which is an advanced acupuncture course. Um, and yeah, that's the basis of it. And then I moved here in June, and now we've got the program going for Compu College. So I was one of the few people who left the West to come to the East. I was uh, the only we're, person we're, on the plane. We're happy to have you here. <laughs> yeah, uh, curious, I'm going to come into all the interesting things that you do, but I'm curious what you said about going into nursing and then looking at medicine, how it wasn't for you. Yeah. What, uh, what wasn't right? Um, the environment for me didn't work for me. I, I like a more natural environment. Um, the, the amount of medications, I thought it would just seem, I just wasn't me, it wasn't me to be doling out medications, although they're necessary at many levels. It just, uh, I had had experience with diet therapy and a uh, skin problem with eczema uh, before that, and nothing had worked, and I had acne when I was a teenager, mm -hmm. and nothing had really worked. I noticed that certain meds I took, I actually had some side effects from it later. So I was more curious to see about what could be done about um, less severe problems in a more natural way. And so that's that's how I, I absolutely. And we've talked it. about that a lot on this program mm -hmm. about you know breaking down barriers to being open-minded about things. And you know I harp all the time about you know I feel we live in a pill culture. You know mm -hmm. and I've said this before. I'm 400 pounds. My knees hurt. Give me a pill for my knees. Mm -hmm. You know that's not your problem. Mm -hmm. a, there are a lot of uh, I guess roadblocks, but I think that is changing too. I think even the, what we'd call traditional medicine is is opening up its or Western medicine is opening up its eyes to traditional methods and uh, hopefully things like this will uh, expand that even further. Uh, I can't agree with you more. In fact, I notice a lot of the younger doctors that have come out of medicine are completely open to it. Lots of our referrals now come from doctors. A lot of them come and see us also. So I know that one of my big, uh, big goals with acupuncture is to help bridge the gap between Eastern medicine and Western medicine because the two are so strong and they work so well together. And there's this funny uh, black and white or either or mentality in North America in general. They think, well, I have to go and do Western medicine only or I have to go and do acupuncture only. It's just not the case. You know, they could maybe take less medication uh, from a doctor if they're seeing us for something, and then we could just reduce levels sure. and have a better treatment. A lot treatment. of that's common sense. I mean, the, and the flip mm -hmm. side does apply too. There are some things you do need medication for, and, you know, you absolutely there needs to be a a reason there and that's where some of the things that we talked about off-air standards and pe having practitioners in your field recognize when it is time to go to have a, a different opinion and something that needs a more I guess westernized approach so that's that's cool that's exactly it. and in this uh, acupuncture program with Compu College we've got seven science courses and even though we look at the body different and we have different semantics for it it's still so important especially in our western world for the students to learn the science side of it otherwise uh, my favorite example is if um, someone comes in and they have a headache and it's been in one spot and it's progressively getting worse over the year, well, it's possible it's a, a tumor. Sure. And so it's very important an acupuncturist knows all these red flags or all these signs of when to refer uh, with a Western practitioner. And then they can help with that. And we can also help with pre-surgery and post-surgery and all these other things to actually complement the procedure they'll get Western-wise. Absolutely. And I think that's been one of the problems. I think the media has perhaps been unfair to traditional therapies and because of the the odd uh, bad story like that and I've certainly seen a few I've seen a few that have you know I've mentioned before I saw a woman with a terrible fungating breast cancer that you know some, the person she was seeing was was trying to treat her with herbs so the you know the tumor would bleed out and mm. it was sad because she was a mother of two and 
she needed surgery, mm -hmm. but she didn't have it. Mm -hmm. But that is, you know, in my opinion, that's the rare example, not the norm. So right. Anyway, let's let's get into a little bit about the specifics of what you do. Mm -hmm. I think people acupuncture maybe of all the things you do is perhaps the most known in our society, mm -hmm. but I don't think people know the depth of what what it's used for and what, you know how it can help. So maybe you could you could fill us in a little bit. Sure. Well, acupuncture is about four or five thousand years old, and they're not even sure exactly how old it is really. And it works on a system of um, energy or chi uh, running through the body, and it's a set meridian system or pathway. Uh, system that the chi runs through. So basically, if um, someone's very fatigued, they ha may have very low chi in their body. Um, if someone feels pain, the chi may have stopped in the pathway, and when the chi stops and it accumulates, you can feel a pain pattern. Your, your leg right now, we would call it a chi stagnation because you had a trauma to it, it stops the chi, which stops the blood, and then you start feeling pain. So we put the needles in to either move the, the chi away, the move the chi and blood, or to bring it more into the body if you're very weak. So basically, well, saying all that, it can treat many, many things. It pretty much treats anything you don't go to emergency for or need uh, acute surgery for. Uh, anything chronic, anything is, I just don't feel right. Um, World Health Organization has uh, hundreds of things they list that we can treat. So really, like I said, anything you don't go to emergency for. Okay. Let's focus on pain for mm -hmm. just a minute because, I mean, I, that is well known. And as I've talked on this program, I do practice chronic pain medicine. A lot of what I do is medication. Some of it is injections. But tell us about how acupuncture can help different types of pain, acute pain, chronic pain. How does that work? Well, for acute pain, um, like I was saying with the pathways, if the chi stops, then you, you have... A collection of chi and the blood stops there too. This is how you see bruising and stuff like this. The semantics can go back and forth in Western, Eastern if you want. Um, so if you have your injury right away, the best thing to do actually is to see an acupuncturist and go on anti-inflammatories. The acupuncturist will actually treat the opposite leg because the meridians flow bilaterally, both sides of the body, uh, and they can help to move the chi so it doesn't collect. If you leave it too long, it starts collecting and collecting and collecting, and that's when you end up having this old injury, this old, oh, the old leg, weather must be acting up, ooh, th this kind of thing, because you've actually never moved that area. So for acute pain, it's one of the best things you can do, again, along with x-ray, and along with anti-inflammatories or whatever Western medicine practitioner thinks you should have. Uh, in terms of chronic pain, it's a lot longer treatments and we look and see what's happened in the body. So if uh, you've had the pain for a very long period of time, well, it usually starts depleting the chi in your body and you start becoming very, uh, other things go along with it. A lot of fatigue with chronic pain, um, a lot of depression. emotional depression a lot of emotional factors. And if you really study TCM, it's really, it's almost fascinating where that comes from on one level, <laughs> not fascinating for the patient, but um, what the chi is collecting in one spot, so in, in a really simple way, it's not going to the rest of the body, and the body's not being nourished with the energy in the blood that it should be. So the, the spot with the pain is hogging. hogging it's hogging. It's okay. hogging. So we help to uh, replenish the body in other ways, and once it, it comes up, and you can, they can move the chi through much, much easier. Of course, there's many different kinds of pain. Yeah, there's absolutely. fibromyalgic pain and yeah, for sure. one spot. You know, I, I have a lot of patients who uh, have, have been to uh, acupuncture, and I encourage them to do so. I must say I don't formally refer, but uh, maybe we're about to change that. So yes. <laughs> maybe we can, uh, maybe we can help with that. Just moving on, about a minute left in this segment. Other things that, uh, specific examples, you can help with fatigue. If people come in just with fatigue, acupuncture can be used to treat that? Yeah, absolutely. There's many different reasons for it. Uh, we don't have one set treatment for fatigue. Right. This is why the program is so long. I urge anyone who wants to take acupuncture to take at least a 1900-hour program because behind the fatigue can be many, many, many different patterns. Um, so we'll look at the organ systems, do a very long diagnostic method to see, well, what's causing it? And then we can uh, choose our needles accordingly. Right. You don't just uh, jump on one cause. You, you look through, just like you would do if, you know, a, a family doctor would do, look for a lot of different causes of fatigue. Right, and look for the root. Because if you don't get the root of the disease, it's like a Band-Aid and you, you only fix it for that one day or one week. Once you fix the root of the problem, then of course everything else can fall back into balance in the body. Yeah, whereas in converse, if you're just treating symptoms and, and you're not helping it. They come back. Okay. Mm -hmm. Out of time for this segment, uh, when we come back, I want to talk a little bit more about acupuncture, you can do iridology, and then uh, maybe you can see what you can do for this. Okay. Right back on Doc Talk, talking about acupuncture. We'll see you then.